The innovation comes from, you know, you are free, you have just blank paper and you're just, you know, you're free to do whatever you want. Nobody innovates that way. Imagine an architecture uh, competition where you say, build the most beautiful or remarkable building. I don't think you would get any meaningful suggestions, or you would get real suggestions, and you couldn't compare them and so on. You have to challenge the people. You have to say, build this building, it's very out there, and you know, it has to have these specifications, it has to solve these purposes, it has to go into this narrow slot. You architecture uh, competitions are all about giving specifications that are very challenging for the architectural form. That's what inspires them. You know, how many like crosswalk passes? Or pseudo? I mean, this this is a simple. Oh, this. Don't lie to me. One person sitting you up behind. You get the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing about it is, we have, let's say, the simplest problem to innovate is, you know, a little pseudo or, or a crossword puzzle where it's just you feel like you can do it if you can think hard, long and hard enough. Of it. That's very inspiring. It gets your attention and you work on it hard. But if I ask you, you know, make a pseudo puzzle, you know, you would spend a couple of hours maybe at maximum on it and then you realize you're not going to do it. Because it's hard to make the question, but it's easy to solve on the whole. So it is about the brilliance of Steve Jobs was he knew exactly the specs, how he wanted the thing to work, how thick it should be, how many buttons, one, nine millimeter thick, all glass, you know, to the front, and touch. And he wanted to say he knew how he wanted it to open. So that inspires people. Now we have concrete code, we are not saying maximize profit. He wouldn't have, you know, build a phone that, uh, you know, sells as well as, uh, you know, or bet twice as well as any other phone. That would get you no good phone. Or, you know, one of my favorites, be happy. You know, what kind of advice is, you know, to students is to say, give me happy. I mean, if they had the answer to that, if they knew what makes them happy, you know, they wouldn't be asking you. <laughs> the problem is, that, you know, what is going to make them happy? That's the question. And, uh, and uh, the same, by the way, applies to many of you in terms of what you want to be. Don't, I don't want Howard to have the, the slogan, come here and fulfill your dreams. The problem is, and we know this from the United States, 80% of the students have, don't know what their dreams are. We need to help you find your dreams or, you know, create your dreams. So, you know, saying that come here and fulfill your dreams is just like saying, you know, just sit down and, you know, you can handle it all by yourself. <laughs> uh, we, you have to be supportive. So, uh, that's, these are about concrete, measurable goals. I call them innovation boxes because you put people and the, the, the younger you are, think about the child, you know. The child needs to be in a crib, physically. You know, feels very uncomfortable as such crying and so on if you just leave it on the floor and, and isn't that true? I don't know how many of you have children. But you know, uh, you need there's even this physical sort of sense of how oh, you want to be in some smaller space because you can control that, you feel safe and control that space. The same applies to this. And as you grow bigger, and if you are successful, say in academia, you will eventually learn to build your own innovation model. 